Hey guys, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back. I guess this is part two of the Gould's pump. Uh, Jeremy went ahead and hooked this thing up to water and it was still leaking. Uh, and the only thing we could come up with is it's gotta be the shaft seal. So we've got the shaft seal here and we are gonna go ahead and put that in. Um, I don't know why they sent it in this box because this is all that comes in there. It's kinda, kinda funny. But anyways, uh, so we're gonna put the shaft seal in. That means we gotta take these bunch of allen heads off again and take it apart so we'll uh, get to work and show you the progress as we go okay so we've gotten the uh, the front of the volute off of it here so we've exposed the impeller uh, we've got our socket driver here uh, 11 16 is the size that it's going to take for that but in order to keep this from spinning we've taken the back plate off right here just the fan cover and then we're gonna have to grab a hold of the shaft from the back end so I've got a pair of pliers here that we'll be able to lock onto that and then we'll be able to wrench this off here. So just gotta get these adjusted. All right, let's see if we can get this guy off of here. <clears throat> Jeez, I must've put that on tight. I think we got it. Yep. All right. So we got that nut out. And I think the impeller also threads on. We may need a strap wrench. All right, so we were able to loosen that strap wrench. We didn't have much to grab onto, so we just threw a cloth over this and then used our channel locks we just want to be careful not to change that profile because otherwise you're gonna have some pretty bad wear hopefully we'll be able to see where this seal is bad rubber split out a little bit yeah, that surface of it actually looks pretty good. I do, I mean, there's a little bit of carbon, but no cracks. So that's a little bit concerning because we had, with the leak that we had. So in further inspection, I think I do see a crack right here on this ceramic. So that could very well be where our leak's at. We'll know more once we get this thing out of here. Oh yeah, that thing's destroyed. So you guys can see that, I hope, right down in there. Underneath, underneath down in here, you've got a bunch of ceramic that's just been blown apart all around it. So that is clearly a seal failure. And this ceramic, which sits in that rubber, so that thing's toast. There's our problem. All right, so we've got our seal here. And now, before I get to handling that, I'm gonna put some gloves on because I really don't wanna make any part of this dirty and I'm not gonna wash my hands just yet. So I'm gonna get some gloves and some lubricant and then we're gonna get to it. So this is, there's what your ceramic should look like. That's a nice looking one and then our carbon side. So these two rub together. So first we want to put this guy in. Hopefully this went in pretty easy. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit of lubrication around here just to make it go in that much easier. And I don't think we're going to have any problems with this one. So the important thing is try to avoid touching anywhere on the face of it. If you can.
and if you do touch it, use a clean glove. Just got a fresh paper towel, just like being safe, more safe than sorry. Because even just the smallest speck of something on that can cause failure in a short period of time. So we're going to put this back in just like that. Let me take our new carbon side. And we'll shove that one on. And that's a pretty tight fit. So I'm going to put just a little bit of lubrication. Not much, a very small amount. Because the way that this compresses is when we put the impeller back on, it smushes that in the rest of the way. So I just want to preserve this bit of rubber here. So I'm just going to use a real small amount of lubricant. Again, being cautious not to touch the face. I just find that a little bit of lubrication really helps these to kind of slide in to place where you want them a lot easier. So now, when we put that impeller on, it'll compress this entire uh, shaft here and then you're not going to have any water that's able to get through there. Okay. Now we're ready to reapply our nut. So as I rotate this impeller around, it it seems like it does, and it's very slight, but the impeller kind of does a little bit of this. Very, very slight. I mean, I'm over-exaggerating by a lot. Um, so that could be that we've got a bearing going bad or perhaps uh, the motor bushing. I don't know if this is a double bearing motor. Um, I haven't looked into that, but you're, we're getting that movement, which undoubtedly caused vibration in, while this was rotating at 3000 RPM or what have you. Um, and and the, the way that this shaft seal has failed kind of tells me that it was vibrations, whether it was the shaft that's actually got some deflection to it, deflection being a little bit bent, um, or if the impeller is just not properly balanced. Um, so that could be that a seal is st starting to go bad, so it's got more play to it. It could just be the impeller wasn't properly balanced. I, uh, I tried to straighten it out just a little bit with by sticking this in here and kind of pulling up on it. Um, so really time will tell with this pump. I think what we've done is we'll be able, it'll fix it, it's gonna work for now, uh, but if the issue happens again, Clearly, we've got a problem with one of those things. Um, so we'll put it back together, uh, water test it, and um, I'm assuming it's not gonna leak, at least for the time being, and we'll go from there. So that's about it for now. We don't, we don't need to show the water test. You guys have seen another number of those. Uh, if we do have problems, we'll be back to the drawing board. So thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll catch you next time.